start with the fact that I've been in small business development really all of my career. Starting with the Business Assistance Center at the City of Fort Worth. Some of you may or may not be familiar with that. I was the first assistant director at the Business Assistance Center in Fort Worth uh, when we were at the Water Gardens Place, which is downtown. Uh, right there at the, at, the, at the back, we used to call it, we had 11 service providers, is what we call them. SCORE was one of our main uh, advising uh, groups. We had the SBA. We had Tarrant County Small Business Development Center was there. We had uh, a group called ECRC, which stands for Electronic Commerce Resource Center. That was the precursor to uh, PTI. We had a couple of CDCs, Community Development Corporations, that actually loaned money. Uh, and, and then we had a network of computers, if you will, in the, what we call the BIC, the Business Information Center, where they're all networked, internet-based uh, computers. And so our goal in life every day was to help small businesses at the, at the beginning level, at the growth stage level, and even at the funding level. So I oversaw all of that on a day-to-day -day basis and having 11 organizations and Living different people is kind of challenging sometimes, but that's where I started. Went from there to Bell Helicopter as a small business liaison officer. Uh, Bell Helicopter, you may know, is a DOD, Department of Defense contractor, prime contractor. I was responsible for writing the subcontracting plan to the DOD. In addition to onboarding all of the suppliers, uh, minority and women on suppliers, that ultimately became suppliers to Bell Helicopter. So, I was responsible for that. Actually did pretty good. We won two awards uh, in the four and a half years I was there. We won two awards. One was the non Perry Award. Actually, we won the non Perry Award twice. Uh, non Perry is uh, Senator Nunn, Senator Perry. They had an award for Mentor Protege Program Excellence. And so we uh, were able to win that award two years that I was there as an SBO. And one of those years, we won the Francis Perkins Award, which was doing business with women on small businesses. Okay? So that led me to Lucid Technologies. Uh, I was hired there to do a second tier subcontracting program. Uh, just so you know, from the prime contractor to the first subcontractor, that is your first tier. Second tier means I, I took all of our our suppliers and help them develop their own subcontracting program, our supplier diversity program. So that was a challenge in itself because not all of them wanted to do that. We needed them to do that because we were able to count second tier spin. So I was, I was, that, that was my goal there. And from, from Lucent, I went to North Grumman as the SBLO. Um, Small business layers and office. That was a unique situation because I was the first dedicated SBLO in division history. Why that's important is because uh, North Carolina had gotten themselves in trouble. And the federal government was going to file for liquidated damages, which means they were telling North Carolina, we want all our money back because you did not have a legitimate supplier diversity program. Okay? And they just, and so you have the DCMA, which is the Defense Contract Management Agency. They're basically the, the police for those supply diversity programs. And North Carolina kept blowing them off, blowing them off. So finally, the government just said, you know what? We'll fix you. We want all the money back. We're talking billions of dollars. So all of a sudden, they, they, they made it a focus to hire a supply diversity officer. So manage that. <laughs> so, uh, and the true story, my first day on the job, I walked in and they were under review. Didn't know what was happening. It turns out that the auditors for DCMA, I knew them from my Bell Helicopter days. So when I walked in the room, they were like, what are you doing here, bro? What are you doing? I'm like, well, this is my first day. And they were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so my bosses that hired me, they had a side from me because they realized I had a relationship with the auditors. So that, that worked out pretty good. Um, and so what ended up happening, we had, uh, y'all may or may not know this, but there are two places in the United States that make night vision goggles. One of them is in Garland, Texas. Wow. The other one's on the East Coast. 
Okay? Most people don't know that. That's the office that I work for. This is a nondescript building because we really don't want you to know what we're doing in there. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's where I work. So I was the supplier, uh, SPRO for North Grumman. And then L3 came in and bought that division. So part of what I had to do was transfer our individual subcontracts to this conglomerate of commercial subcontracts. Anyway, part of the challenge is for every contract that North Grumman had with the federal government, you have to have a subcontract you plan to go with it. Okay? So it could be 40 or 50 contracts at any one time. Well, that became a lot to manage, and so they allowed us, they did the DCMA, allowed us to group all of our contracts together under the commercial plan. So I was, was responsible for that. That was a lot of work, but we got it done. Uh, and then from there, uh, I was fortunate enough to go and do some commercial work for a telecom construction company. And then from there, um, and that was shortly there. But then that brings me to where I am now, at the Small Business Development Center. Okay? The, the Small Business Development Center is a national network. We've got 1,100 uh, SBCs around the country. Okay? All of them are associated with a university or a college in some way. That is the funding vehicle in which they get their money. You're gonna, the SBDC is going to get money from your state, from the SBA itself, Small Business Administration, and the school that they're associated with. So that's the funding mechanism. We are part of Dallas County Community College District here. Okay? We cover the North Texas area. There's also a Western region for the SBDC. There's a southwest region in San Antonio, and then there's one in Houston. So Texas being the size state that it is required those four different networks, but we're all part of the Small Business Development Center network on a national basis, okay? Now, at the Bill Priest Center, where I'm located, we have really, we try to have one united front, but there's always some division there. And the reason I say that, I'm going to make it clear, the Dallas Metropolitan Small Business Development Center, which I'm about to say, is in our office, the Bill J. Priest Center. Okay? They're going to be more likely to give you services and help like Mr. Mr. Howard was discussing. If you're a startup business, like the young lady here was talking about starting up, or if you're growing your business or you're expanding, so you're going to be looking at marketing plans, business plans, even exit plans. Okay? The Dallas Metro SBC can help you with that. They do that through one-on-one -on -one counseling. They do it through classroom instruction. One of the big events that they do every year is called Deal Day, okay? That's really, really important for you if you're looking for funding for your business. You have access directly to the bankers that are part of that network that they've developed. And they put you in contact with those guys. And actually, deals have been done on Deal Day. So that's something to put on your calendar. Uh, you can reach out to me or the Dallas Metro SBC see what the next uh, deal day is, but it's usually once a year. Okay? But that's what they do. Help you grow, help you grow your business, expand your business. Uh, the financials, obviously we heard it a bunch, financials are so important, especially if you're trying to become bankable. Okay? You have to have the finances in order. Excuse me? What month is Usually deal day is, uh, this, this year it was in September. Okay. okay. Um, and by the way, if you have any questions along my, my speech here, please feel free to stop me and ask your question. But yes, deal day is, is once a year. Dallas Metro SBDC does a good job of that. Um, and they have classroom instruction, one-on-one -on -one instruction. I think uh, Ms. Proctor, she went to a, a jumpstart class. If that's a good class. They have business plan writing, they have financials, they have uh, search engine optimization classes, teach you if you want to have a web presence, uh, online presence, they teach you how to do that. So there's a lot of resources, and it doesn't cost you anything. What did I say? It doesn't cost you anything. Right. Okay? Why? Because you've already paid for our services through your tax dollars. Okay? Kind of like Zara mentioned earlier. Your, your tax dollars have already paid for us. So 
what did I say before? Don't pay anybody to do your business plan to put your 8A certification together or your GSA schedules. We can do that for you for free. Well, it's not free. No cost is there because you've already paid for it. That's what the Dallas Metro SPDC does. More specifically, what I do is help identify, help you identify government contracting opportunities, whether it be state, federal, or local level. Our emphasis is on the federal, okay? Now, that brings me to, uh, I think Ms. Sonia mentioned something about SAM. If you want to do business, first of all, by show of hands, how many people think they want to do business with the federal government? I always ask that question because I alluded to it earlier. One of the things, the first question that I'm going to ask you is, are you prepared to finance that procurement through the first billing cycle? Wow. That's important because if they are going to pay, it takes 60 days. If you're lucky, you're paying in 60 days. You may have to go out to 90 days. So you could be looking at four, maybe even six payrolls before you get your first check from the federal government. So you have to ask yourself, can you do that? Do you have the capacity to carry the government for that long? That's the first question I ask. If you do, if you think you do, then we'll start talking about, okay, what, what, what makes sense for you to do? What, what, what business are you in? Well, the federal government cannot buy anything from you unless you have a NAICS code, N-A-I-C-S. Stands for North American Industry Classification System. They cannot buy anything from you unless you have them identify your product or service by a NAICS code. Mm -hmm. so you gotta have a registration, free. Your NAICS code, look up, that's free. We can help you with both of those. Then the next step, I want you to sit down and let's look at historical spending by federal agency. There's some procurement databases out there that will help you with that. We subscribe to one called Proxity, P-R-O-X-I-T-Y. That is for the fee that you have to subscribe to that, but there's others that don't cost you anything. Because here's what you want to know. You know, you have your next code, and you know that the Department of Transportation has exactly has historically spent, let's say, a million dollars a year in your NAICS code, then there is where you want to probably want to form your strategy, okay? But there's other agencies that are going to be spending money. The federal government buys everything, okay? So what you want to do, let's identify from a historical standpoint how much money they have spent, okay? Now, one way to do that is through usaspending.gov, that's one. Uh, you can do it through Proxy, that's another one, and I, we can sit down and talk about all the others that you might want to look at in terms of research and historical spending. One other thing, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about when you come see me is make sure that you get registered in FBO.gov. It stands for Federal Business Opportunities.gov. It's free. Okay? What's so cool about that? FBO, you can register your company either by keywords or by your NAICS code. <coughs> Here's what happens. Once you register your company in there, FBO will send you an email every single day. Okay? It's free. Federal government. They'll send you an email every day based on your profile. What you're going to get is one of five things. You're going to get an RFQ, request for quotes. You're going to get reports for proposals. You're going to get um, sources sought, which is my favorite, because the government is telling you, I'm looking for a source that can do this. That's why they call it sources sought. It's not even a solicitation yet. They're just wanting to know who out there can provide this product or service. Sources sought. The other one I like is RFI, request for information. Same kind of scenario. Government is saying, hey, who can provide this product or service? Okay? Then the other thing is they will show, the FBO will show you the awards in your next year. So how valuable is that? Okay? If you know who won the award, how much it was for, and how long it was, okay, oh, and in addition to that, you can do you can do research and figure out when the contract is expiring. 
So if you know if XYZ company has this award currently and it expires in 18 months, kind of to Zarin's point, now is type of the time you want to start marketing, identifying that contracting officer, a contracting specialist. Hey, Mr. Contract Officer, specialist, I can help you solve your problem. And so strategies and techniques to talk to you about how to do that. There's questions that you, you can ask them. Do you plan on spending the same amount of money next year? Could you consider splitting your work? Could you sit, consider setting it aside for a woman or, or service disabled vet? Have you, this, and so you have this conversation with them prior to or six months in advance of the contract expiring. You'd be amazed how many times that language that you've been talking about can actually get into the solicitation. But hopefully you get to them before that, okay? But FBO, Federal Business Opportunities is, is a wealth of information, so we'll, we'll talk to you about that. The other thing is, we have set-aside classes. Um, you know, the SBA has a lot of set-aside programs. We will actually uh, have the SBA come in. Nancy Alvarez is the director for the SBA's uh, 8 certification program. She teaches a class on a monthly basis, or has someone teach a class on a monthly basis at our, at our facility. Yes, ma'am. You've mentioned 8A certification several times. Can you explain just briefly what it is? Okay, 8A, uh, the number 8, the letter A, is a program that the Small Business Administration administers. It's called a Business Development Program. It's a nine-year program, okay? So if you become certified, first of all, in order to get certified with the SBA, there's a lot of paperwork that you have to do. I can help you put all that paperwork. It's going to talk about your tax returns, personal and business, uh, letters of incorporation. You have to have documented proof. If you have sold any stock in your company, you have to have proof of that. There's all kinds of this. There's a checklist if you went out there to the SBA website that we can help you go through that. Here's the key about A to A. A lot of people say, I want to do A to A. I hear that all the time. And I ask them the question. Do you really want to do A day? Okay. Let me tell you what that means. Because of the, the amount of time and effort it takes to put all that documentation together. Okay? That's the first thing. And then here's the second thing. Most, and they won't tell you this, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to squirrel on it. You have to write a letter to them explaining how you have been socially and or economically disadvantaged in order for them to say, that you are 8A certified. Mm -hmm. I've seen people put their packages together and write their letter to the SBA, and, and the letter didn't pass muster, they kicked them out because they weren't convincing enough that because the term, and we mentioned earlier, disadvantage, and the letter, I think Stephanie, or maybe Alicia mentioned it, that's the federal term. The full term is socially and or economically disadvantaged, okay? And so if you haven't proved to the federal government that you are socially, which is normally an ethnic minority, or economically disadvantaged, then they won't approve you, okay? Give you an example. We have a client right now, is a Caucasian woman, okay? She has her 8A certification. You would say, well, how'd she get that? Well, she's in the welding business. How many women are in the welding business, okay? So from her standpoint, she was economically disadvantaged being in that, a woman in that business, so she got her 8A certification and doing very well at it. So that's the full term, socially and or economically. And you have to prove to them that's what you are. Let's say you get your certification. Now the marketing starts where you have to actively and aggressively market yourself to those federal agencies to let them know you have your 8A certification, okay? It's a business development program. Now, I say that because by year three or year four, okay, they're already talking about kicking you out the program. That's not the right way to say it. <laughs> but, 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 but it's, I'm sorry. But because what, because what they want to do is help develop your business to the point where you have been at some point weaned off of the government, okay? So they don't want you to put all your eggs in the government basket. They want you to concentrate on your commercial business as well. So by year four, 
you know, they want you to start, you know, getting out of the way. Okay? But it's a completely a nine-year program. Now, I've seen people go through all this work, get their certification, and then next year, 12 months, you have to renew or update your information. If you don't do that, they'll kick you out. Okay? So, I'm like, okay, hey, hey. I'm going to tell you, I'm on the fence. If you want to do it, I'll help you do it, but there's some pros and some cons to it, okay? Because the only reason you do that is that so you go to the Department of Transportation, the Department of Education, any of the bond agencies and say, okay, and we can do it by historical research, have they spent money on a a set aside? Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. Maybe you have an opportunity to convince them to set the 8A procurement aside, okay? So, 8A is something that, again, we can sit down and help you think through whether you really want to do it. Just the next uh, event that we do like this and the collaboration between all of our panelists. Let's give them a hand one more time. <laughs> to Mr. Sherman for letting us use this place and these lovely ladies back here who uh, furnished us with the lunch. Thank you so much. Let's give them a hand. come and register with the City of Dallas and get connected with some of the other resources that are at your disposal, all right? Thank you guys for coming out. Thanks,